we're going to go ahead and call the uh, Kern Valley Healthcare District Monthly Board of Directors meeting to order. Uh, item B is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt tonight's agenda? I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda as written. Moved by Director Bush. Is there a second? Second. Second by Director Parks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> okay, that passes. Item one is a flag salute. Our CEO, Tim McGlue, will lead the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Those of us who remain standing, uh, Mr. Beadle, if you would give the invocation tonight. Sure. Our rights eternal Father in heaven. We bow at the beginning of this monthly meeting of the Kern Valley Healthcare District. Grateful Father we are for this time and for having this service here in our community. We ask you to help us and guide us in the things that we do tonight, that we may be united in our thoughts and our actions, and that those thoughts and actions may be in accordance with our mind and will. Bless us and help us always to help those who need help, to be grateful for those who have the expertise, provide the, the care that needs to be given. And this we ask this night in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chad. And, uh, item three is our... Uh Mission statement, uh, Director Bush will read the mission statement tonight. Our mission statement reads, we will provide high quality, efficient patient care services that respond to community and provider needs. We will provide leadership in health promotion and education for our patients, residents, medical staff, employees, and community throughout the district. Okay, thank you, Director Bush. Uh, item C is public comment. Do we have any public comment this evening? Uh, yes, ma'am, and uh, under the Brown Act, it's three minutes, and please uh, state your name and go to the podium. Thank you. My name is Bobby Featherston. I live in Squirrel Valley. First of all, I want to thank the foundation for the concerts. <laughs> These concerts in the park are the best. <laughs> it's a very big morale boost for the community, and it's wonderful to see children being children. They're playing, they're silly, they're dancing. It's a great activity. I hope it stays every summer and I hope you make some money in the booths. <laughs> we do too. Um, and I, I have heard so many good things about Dr. Lopez, the new doctor back here. Mm -hmm. Friends of mine have been going there a long time and this doctor, she must be the kindest, most caring person because she listens. And um, the upgrades are beautiful. So keep up all the good work. Okay, now here comes the punch. <laughs> we'll do that first. <laughs> um, because I drive up and down McCray all the time, I have noticed a lot of water runs down McCray. And it's watering all those sunflowers down there. It mm. runs across my, uh, Laurel, it runs across. So. Oh, I would really like to speak up to the maintenance department or whoever is in uh, charge of the water and the landscaping. Because we need to save money on bills, that's one place to start. I know the Mountain Mesa water is a lot less expensive than Cal water, but I'm an environmentalist who believes you have to save the water. Whatever your budget is, the water is more important that we not lose that resource. So I would like somebody here to talk to maintenance, ask them to look at their schedule. Because I went by on August 16th, about 8.30. This whole area over here was just flooding <coughs> and it was pouring down. Well then, Friday night after the concert, nine o'clock, I come out and this whole front parking lot is flowing. I mean flowing. It's coming down the big walk where you take your wheelchairs up over by mm. the nursing home. It's coming down some of the steps. Some of the sprinklers are too close. They're too heavy going out onto the pavement. But I believe it's running too long. The grasses can't absorb a whole long 
time of watering. I don't know the schedule, and I don't go by that much at night, but I am pretty disappointed in this happening. And I know if I have anybody's phone numbers on the board, I can call. And I know yeah, Jay would prefer I don't call. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. He never tells me not. He never you can call me not. directly. But I would like the attention of the board, the people who pay the bills, and whoever's in charge. I don't know that we need all that grass. The grass is excellent. But there's a different way to landscape with rock, succulents. But if you want to keep the grass, I love grass. I love green. It's healing. But we've got to regulate the watering. It has it's to be a shorter fix. term. They have to be adjusted. No more going down the road. They are on timers. And I don't know if there's been an issue with the timer. I'll have to check. I did hear that there were some problems that okay. they're having. That might be what caused that. Because then I know it hasn't been the case. But yeah. Yeah, please. You can call me anytime. Okay. Uh, I don't right? have your phone number. I got his at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been keeping my phone. I got his at work. But so, anyway, anytime. I just want you to please conserve the water. You got it. Bring down the water bill, even if it's small, and um, maybe reconsider some of the, the landscaping. I agree. Okay. Okay. Thank, 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 thank you so much, much Bobby. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you. I don't need to be obnoxious. Oh, you're fine. No, it's, 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 it's a very valid point. That is one of the kindest criticisms we've had in years, <laughs> you know, so that's an easy no, fix. It's an people easy people fix. No, you got okay. it. His invocation says, yeah. well, we're all here in one mind. Yeah. Give a wand, make it better. Okay. Are there, yep. it, okay, are there any other uh, public comments this evening? Okay, hearing none. Thank you, Ms. Featherston. Uh, item D is the uh, consent agenda. And then there's quite a bit on here. Is there anything that one needs to be pulled before we adopt the consent? I move we accept the consent agenda. We do the attorney. Is that what you offered the attorney? He was pulled. You had pulled something on the last two right, months right. for on in the financial yeah, meeting, right? In finance. Well, yeah. yeah. Is there? I don't see it on here, Gene. So. Okay. Make a motion that we accept the oh, Okay. Uh, it's been moved by Director Parks. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Director Bush. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Item E is the uh, reports, foundation reports. Ms. Hess, welcome. Good evening. Aye. We're going to be very busy this month. We have um, the first flyer I'm sending out is for the blood draw. That's going to be this Saturday and also on Monday from 8 to 10. 10. Then on the 21st, or the 20th rather, is going to be the health fair. So just apply for that. We're also uh, doing another diabetic class that starts next Wednesday on the 11th through the 25th from 5:30 till 7 in this room. And then the last thing we have coming up, up is our annual craft fest. It's our second annual craft fest. So if any of you want tickets, we do have tickets here tonight. Do you have any questions? It's going to be crab and filet this year. It's going to be crab and filet and yeah. Just Tim and I don't eat crab, so. <laughs> Is it and or? It's going to be either or. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Hess? Okay, thank you, Debbie. Actually, uh, well, oh, yes, yeah, if you don't mind, uh, when, when, can, when will we have uh, results of the August shows? Do you know? Or is that a foundation? I think uh, it's something now, that like this Friday or Monday. Okay. Well, I mean, we can report on it next meeting, but okay. But can, to you, I guess, make comment. I've heard more this year about that uh, park music, and it's awesome. Everybody's loving it. I think because Charlie's not there as much. <laughs> it, it, uh, but very we've heard a lot of very positive things about it. Thank you, Debbie. <clears throat> Item two is the auxiliary report. Uh, Ms. Rubert, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Don't you know that she was? I just heard you pass around a point. Well, we've had a busy month. 
we, in the last four weeks, we, in the last two weeks, we've had four break-ins. Oh, wow. Yes. So Bob, yesterday, head of maintenance, finally put up the galvanized, and it looks fabulous. And it, I think it's going to cut it down. We still have to order some more because we found another hole now coming behind the sheds because there's people living in the storage facility next door. Uh, we're still getting a lot, a lot of donations coming in, so that's good. So we have job security there. Mm -hmm. River Rhythms was awesome this year, um, as, as well as my regular volunteers. We had Judy, we had Kenny, we had Jeannie over there. We had, let's see, I got a list, Lonnie, Ellen, and myself. We were the regulars there, everything. And... The last thing I have is the blood drop, and we will be there Saturday to help you, Jeannie, and I will be working it. And I got my tickets. <laughs> there any questions for Ms. Uh, Rupert on the auxiliary? <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Uh, item three is the medical staff report. Dr. Finstad's not here. Does he have a written report that? No. Okay. He'll present next month. Okay. <coughs> Item four is the Chief Executive Officer Report. Mr. McGlue. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. uh, just reporting uh, the hosp all hospitals in California uh, were mandated as a part of the AB 2190 to uh, submit an application to uh, OSHPOD uh, regarding the fact that the boards of directors of, of each of the hospitals have been notified um, of the need to complete their seismic upgrades by January 1st of 2030 or face the need to either demolish, replace, change uh, to a non-acute use or seismically retrofit their facilities. Uh, our board, obviously, we have known about that for a long, long time. Uh, but at our board uh, building committee the other day, we did uh, formally bring the, the attestation letter, which has uh, been sent in to the two Oshman. And so we are complying with that regulation. Uh, just a quick update on the train project. The lighting retrofit portion of the project has been completed. That was phase one. Uh, phase two is in process. Uh, the plans have been reviewed by Oshpad. They have come out with the first set of comments. Uh, those are being addressed by the architects on that project uh, with train uh, for their responses, and then they will be resubmitted, and uh, we will see where we have to go from there. Um, the response, I think, in the lighting so far has been wonderful. Uh, just, it's huge improvement all over the facility. Uh, you know, we've got a couple of small areas that, were, for some reason, didn't get onto the project, like this room, uh, which we will kind of do ourselves as a result of it's not that expensive as an upgrade to do. Uh, but again, it just makes a huge difference. And so, uh, again, we're waiting, obviously, if we get similar uh, performance out of the chiller and the two boilers uh, that are part of phase two, uh, that will set us well for the long term. Uh, we, uh, there was a visit held with Kaiser recently. Uh, Greg and Chet uh, 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 had a meeting with them to talk about uh, uh, where we go from here. There was some progress made uh, at that meeting to hopefully begin uh, maybe assigning patients to our clinic up here. Uh, we're still having some conversations about that, but that was a big step forward, I think, from them. And so, uh, and obviously we got some training that need, will need to happen uh, by them for our staff uh, prior to that being completed. So uh, again, I think uh, it was a good step forward. We'll see how things progress. We're going to kind of keep the pressure on a little bit to kind of keep this thing moving uh, because we know it's important to the people in the community here. And so, uh, again, uh, we'll be happy to keep you apprised on that one. Uh, the uh, Chet has been having some regular meetings. You know, we talked about this in our last management meeting about creating some strategic improvement plans. Um, Chet kind of took that one step farther as he's been meeting with each department to kind of on an annual basis go over their financial uh, performance and directions and so forth. And has been coming up with at least the A goal or a couple of goals uh, for each department. Apparently it's been well received. Uh, we're almost completed with that process. Uh, and so we're going to be monitoring those as we go on throughout the year. Uh, we're going to be talking about them as part of a regular part of our, our management meeting, uh, just to kind of you know keep things moving forward and, and make sure that we all have our goals. Tonight, I think my goals are kind of on here uh, that will be discussed later. Uh, but I think you know each department should have goals. You know, obviously that they shoot for as well. 
And so I want to thank Chet for his work and working with those departments and doing that. Uh, and the last thing I have is, you know, the pharmacy, uh, I think I reported last time the time before that the pharmacy board had been out here inspecting our uh, compounding hood. It's a normal process that they go through. Uh, and uh, we had to make some minor revisions uh, with the location of the hood because uh, for certain clearances around that, that had been completed. It was uh, done as an emergency uh, project through Ashbad. Uh, that has been completed. We've received the approval on our compounding uh, certificate, and so we are good to go with that. Uh, there's just a couple of minor little things that they're finishing up with some flooring in there uh, and so forth, and that will finish that project up. So uh, we're pleased to get that come through from the pharmacy board today. So uh, that's all I have. Are there any uh, questions or comments for Tim on the CEO report? And on the earthquake requirement that uh, we sent in, yeah. we're still in the process of modifying that, right? Or we're attempting to. Uh, Not modifying it, no. I mean, the, okay. grant, the grant you're talking about? No, no. Okay. I'm talking about uh, the requirement by 2030 we have to comply. Yes. Uh, what we have to comply to is still up in the air, if I understand. The emergency room might be the only thing that we have to... It might be. At this oh, point, the whole sorry. thing is still there, yes. Okay. The but but they're yeah. attempting to change yeah. it to... Yeah. SB 758 was okay. the bill. That, okay. was, that got moved from a, from a bill that was due this year. They made it into a two-year bill, so it won't come back <coughs> <until> next year <laughs> while they continue to work out that language. So, you know, obviously if the grant comes through, then the monies are there to do the whole thing, which we should do anyway. Uh, and if not, then obviously we would start the project with the ER because we know that's the direction they're heading. And so obviously then as we got that completed, we'd look at other phases down the road. Okay, thanks, so, Tim. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks, Tim. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, yes, Tim. Uh, will, will someone be reporting on the planning and building committee and what happened on that? Well, that was interesting. They're in the past. The minutes are in the packet here. Uh, one of the things that just, uh, and I'll put it out here because it was, I thought it was significant, um, was that we had a meeting with the architect uh, about two weeks ago uh, and uh, reviewing the building codes. The new 2019 building codes have just been released. Uh, they're due to go into effect in January of 2020. Um, what we saw in those <coughs> Change, those uh, regulation changes uh, could add a couple million dollars to the project. So we are uh, pushing forward to get the, the rest of the plans done. We don't have to submit complete plans to Oshpon, but if we can get the bulk of the plans submitted to Oshpon before the end of this year, uh, it will lock into 2016 codes, which will save us a lot. And so uh, we're, the board did approve at that meeting the, the, I think the extra monies for the architectural fees and the engineering fees to get that done. And so uh, we're moving forward with that. So that was the most significant piece that came out of that meeting. Thank you. You're right. Uh, of course, Debbie, if you want copies of the minutes of the committee meeting, you can kind of highly make you a copy. Or, they should be in that full the board packet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or online, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Debbie. <clears throat> Item 5 is the Chief Nursing Officer Report. Uh, Mr. Gordon, welcome. Well, I'm happy to report uh, that I had a wonderful two-week vacation to <laughs> South Dakota where I introduced my new great-grandson to the world, and that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. And my second granddaughter was married, so... I got to travel to, back to South Dakota and you weren't expecting participate in that. The, uh, yeah, the, the birth of my first great-grandson was three and a half weeks early, so it happened that we were there when it happened, so that was very convenient. And he's very healthy, and he's the, the cutest baby on the planet. <laughs> Greg. Did you induce birth or something? Uh, <laughs> well, if you call making like granddaughter run up and down the stairs three or four times. <laughs> so, no. a little. so what I do want to report on though is the, some of the progress we're making. I reported last month on the opiate uh, crisis in America and what we're doing as a facility, uh, doing a safe hospital self-assessment to find out ways to decrease the use of opiates, to look at um, 
some feasibility, feasibility studies for the, the prescribing of Narcan in the community, also for medication-assisted treatment programs that we're looking at. Um, the, the, the struggle with a rural community is that there's not a lot of resources. The hospital has to rely on community resources to, to make these things successful. So we can implement something like that. We can start something like that. But in, if we don't have the cooperation of the local providers or any new pain management specialists and things like that, those they're very low success rates with those kinds of things. On Sunday, I leave uh, to go to a opiate uh, conference, an opiate reduction conference in Phoenix, where I'll hopefully learn about what the rural communities are doing to address some of the problems with opiate related overdoses and things like that. So I hope to bring back a lot of good information from that conference. Um, we shall see. Um, I reported last month about a electronic health record utilization program that the CPSI, which is our EHR provider, um, came out and did a kind of a, an assessment of how we're using their tool, their electronic health record tool, and saw some areas in the nursing administration role that, that's my role, where I was not using those tools to the best of their uh, ability. So I looked at uh, what I've been doing a lot of audits over the past, since January, actually, and uh, audits for waiting times for admission. I've been doing audits for medication safety, scanning medications and things like that, MedVerify. I've been doing uh, other critical lab value studies. So there's a lot of studies and a lot of tools that that electronic health record has that I'm able to now tap into, start doing the studies, and we've been reporting on those and, and steady improvements we're showing, we're showing good productivity there. So yes, I am now taking full advantage of what that system has to offer. Uh, progress is moving forward to put our CNA program together. We did get that grant that I mentioned last month. Now I have to submit the packet to the grant company, the, the people that are offering the grant, so they can say, you have our blessing, go ahead and submit that to the state. That'll be done before the end of September to get that money from the grant, uh, part of that money. And then uh, the next part of that is to put together the program and the approval we have to get back by the end of December. So the application goes in by the end of this month. The approval for the program is back to us by the end of December. We should have a new program sometime early January, February-ish, I'm hoping, to be able to, to manage our own program. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Everybody probably in this room knows the struggles we have with getting CNAs, getting a CNA uh, program together and, and keep it running. So the, the trouble with the old CNA program is a lot of our, a lot of our trainees came from the ECHO program that the school had. And the school kind of put that grant-funded program by the wayside because they ran out of money for that program. So a lot of that pipeline went away for those CNA students. They were fresh out of high school and literally kind of, it's a struggle to find people for that. And then, uh, hey Mark. Yes, sir. Question on CNA. Um, so if we can actually start the classes in January, February timeframe, how long does it take to get them certified? What kind of? It's, uh, I believe, you know, I'm, I'm probably not the right guy to ask. I think it's 12 weeks. 12 weeks. 12, 12 weeks, weeks, yeah. Okay. And then, then they have to, uh, it was a good it guess, was it? To get it was a good guess, was it? It takes longer for them to uh, get their certification after they've qualified yeah. for it. Yeah, once they take their yeah. board certification test, yeah. it takes, it can take up to 10 weeks to get their There's notification back that, hey, you're a CNA now. Oh. It's really crazy. Huh. It, it surprises me that it takes them that long if there aren't that many to be had, but it's, I don't know. So we're looking at probably summertime. Summer, yeah, spring, spring, summer, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You bet. You bet. And then the other thing is, uh, we have some uh, 
some turnover right now in the nursing department. I don't have exact figures for you. I tried to get those before I came here. But it is uh, tenuous at best. I lost a couple of nurses to moving across the country. They went and moved to Georgia, of all places. I told them there's a hurricane coming. They didn't believe me. but. Anyway, I so was just there. I got bitten by mosquitoes. And uh, <laughs> South Dakota has those too. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, and that's my report. Unless there are questions. Uh, any other questions for Mark? Yes, ma'am. I had a question, Mark. A couple of uh, weeks ago, at the River Union concert, there was a woman from Bakersfield Health Services going around with a survey specifically for rural areas. And they she was located in Bakersfield, but I don't remember exactly who she said where she was. But they're trying to get some help up here for the rural areas. Are awesome. you associated with that in any way? I haven't heard from that area? person at all. Never came to my desk. <laughs> yeah. And I was at three of the five, so. Those of us that were there, uh, I didn't know that anybody was there doing that. So. Yeah, um, well, I can say she was wearing purple, like that means anything, you know, but um, <laughs> she did. She, she came up, introduced herself, said she did it, she was doing a survey, would we like to participate? There were a few of us who did do that. They were concerned for the rural area, us being one of them, of course, and they wanted to. <coughs> give that information that or get the information that she was ga gathering to Bakersfield but since Bakersfield's not rural I was wondering if that associated with us up but here. But who in Bakersfield? Yeah I, 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 I'm, Bakersfield. I'm a little skeptical yeah, now. I, mean, I don't know. We'll have to ask she her hasn't been here so I, she was good um, I heard something um, about it, and it was early on, if I remember correctly. It wasn't at one of the later ones. It was one of the first ones, I think, that happened. Well, this one was two weeks ago. Oh, really? It was no. Yeah, I remember hearing about her earlier. I just remember she was yeah. there about two, two of them. Yeah. Thin ladies. I would encourage you to, to uh, direct those folks over to, you know, Tim or I or somebody in the hospital yeah. to just kind of. Um, okay vet that yeah, out you know what i mean because here vista you know obviously they have their clinics here and so forth sure. that they're, they're based in you know bakersfield i would have sure. remembered um, if she had a side clinic because yeah. she just said health services current health services current health systems yes, uh, current health well they were one of the sponsors of the event so it's possible mm -hmm. that they might have been doing oh, that yeah that so, could be yeah current mm -hmm. family health mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. anything else Thank you, Mark. No. Pictures of my grandbaby right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you kept your tan while you were there. You'll be around right right afterwards. Right. Yeah. I'm sure we have time to do a slideshow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay, uh, next is the Chief Financial Officer Report, Mr. Beal. Welcome. Well, we've embarked in on a new fiscal year. Uh, it's really kind of nice that our fiscal year starts in July here because that is normally a fairly busy month for the community. We have a, uh, for, and for the hospital, uh, with all of the visitors in the summer for uh, water sports, et cetera. Uh, it tends to uh, make our, our lives a little busier here at the healthcare uh, facilities as well. So we had a pretty decent uh, start through our fiscal year. Uh, the month of July saw us uh, on an uh, inpatient side actually uh, doing 3.6 average in our acute beds, which we haven't seen for a while, which was about the same as we did in the prior year. And it actually, our swing beds have been fairly problematic in the last six months. We haven't had as many swing bed patients. Some months, no patients. But we actually had an average daily a census of 1.3 in our swing beds in the month of July. And that was uh, higher than last year at 0.9. So uh, we beat last year's total uh, inpatient medical surgical services, average daily census at 
versus 4.6 in the same month of last year. Uh, we also beat our average from last year in the skilled nursing. We did 58.9 average daily census of residents versus 57.9 uh, the same month a year ago. Our ER visits, however, were down a little bit from last year, although they were not bad based upon our normal averages. We had 638 emergency room visits versus last year at 682. Uh, that actually, to give you an idea, the budget was 599, which is somewhat of an average of what we normally see, or normally under 600. So that was still not bad. We, of those patients, we admitted 4.86% in last year, we admitted 4.5% or 4.55. Um, our outpatient visits were down a little bit from last year. We had 1,155 outpatient visits. These are patients that come from physicians' offices to have ancillary service tests, uh, not from the emergency room, just from physicians' offices or our rural health clinic. And a year ago, we had 1,209. Uh, observation beds were actually down a little bit too. Uh, bed days at 19 versus 33 last year. Our primary care clinic visits were up substantially uh, from last year. We had 1,489. That's one of the highest months we've had in a long time for primary care visits. Uh, we had 1,117 in the prior year. And by the way, Dr. Lopez was a part of this year and she had just started in July of last year. So that shows you a little bit of what's happening. We can probably tell you that in that month, certainly all of our all of our providers, including her and all the mid-levels were busy, full schedules, right? Uh, for the specialty visits, which is basically for the most part uh, behavioral health, we also had a good month at 313 visits uh, we had 295 last year, same month. We had four outpatient surgeries. Uh, this is not this is not endoscopies. This is this is actual surgeries, uh, where we had five last year in the month of July. We had 50 endoscopies or GI lab procedures. Uh, we had 53 last year. Our retail pharmacy is beginning to show signs of waking up from a, a slower period. Uh, now that we've done some work there and got some new people, they did 3,697 prescriptions filled in the month of July, and a year ago we did 2,724. So you can see that our uh, <coughs> volume was, was good in the month of July, uh, relatively speaking. <coughs> what that volume actually did was it gave us gross patient charges of 9,794,000. I always like to hit as close to $10 million a month as we can, and we came pretty darn close. A year ago, that was only 9.5 million. Uh, collectible, however, uh, based upon the financial classes of those patients, 2.4 million, 2.246. Last year, 2.452, so almost exactly the same. Interestingly, our expenses even, and that was with, by the way, a 7% price increase that was done on July 1st. Our expenses, uh, even though we had uh, subsequent to July of last year, uh, raises that went for people, uh, we had uh, cost increases in some of our uh, items that we buy, supplies, et cetera, pharmaceuticals. We did 2.360 million in operating expenses. 2.351 last year, so just a hair above what it was last year, not much. Uh, so on an operating basis before non-operating, we did 66,000 profit. Uh, last year we did 101,000. We took our non-operating, which is basically our interest income, our property taxes, our interest expense long-term, and money from auxiliary, et cetera, uh, we actually did, we had a net deficit this month of July of $1,458. Last year we had a deficit in those categories of 11523 So this year we actually did 
602 profit in the month of July. Last year we did 89,740. Our budget was 57,929. So we beat our budget. We did we actually did not beat our last year's amount because uh, our net amount of our discounts and allowances were a little greater. Obviously, year to date for one month is the same. Uh, we did have a also during the, the end of last fiscal year in May and June, we actually had a lot of our supplemental income come in from our uh, non operating items from Medi-Cal. Uh, and so we actually had projected much less and we started thought we were going to start our operating, not all of our cash, but our operating cash at about 137,000 negative. And we actually started the month of July with 1.488 million positive. We collected 2.2 million. We had budgeted 2.1. We spent on operations 2.5. We had budgeted 2.6. We actually didn't have to pull. We had actually said that we were going to pull uh, some money from our our investment account, if you will, our reserves, half a million dollars. We didn't have to pull any money from our investment account. Uh, we also kind of expected to having started to get some money from maybe the grant around this time. We had a budget at 134000 Obviously, that's still out there and, and waiting. We'll see if that comes to fruition later. But we still put 130000 into our bonds. We had expected to put, for the because the bond payment's August 1st. Uh, we also paid extra on our line of credit from the bank, 54000 and we had projected not to, to, to give them anything. So before our operating reserves, we had 993000 our budget actually was to be a negative 272. We put our, with our reserves, which are uh, basically an operating reserve of 144,000, which is exactly the same as budgeted, and in Medicare overpayment reserve, not much, 7,396. We actually ended the month with 1,145 for operations where our budget was to have 119 negative. And that's my report, unless there are questions. Nice. Chet, uh, Bobby had a question, and I yeah, have a, Am I allowed to ask? You can, you can ask sure. questions. On the pharmacy services, because I, <coughs> I think the pharmacy is available to paying customers exactly 40 hours a week. If you look at this, and then they're completely closed during lunch, would they expand their services if they Found, and I don't know if it would justify the actual new income and new clients coming in with the cost if they had it open nine to ten hours a day because a lot of people want to go on their lunch hour and they get there and it's like, well, can't go in. Actually, we moved the lunch hour around a couple of times yeah, yeah, yeah. to try it. And this is where they found the least demand is, in the, is the hour time? that they take. Yeah, because we tried it. Instead of from 12 to 1, we tried 1 to 2. So we've tried different but things, I'm, but we, at this point in time, it hasn't. No, this I'm is just saying, case. don't close it. Can you even open it? Uh, actually, you we know? only have one pharmacist working down there. Oh, right. you and you must oh. have a pharmacist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, no. They, they I, gave me there without no, that's that. what I'm saying. Could yeah. it, I didn't know the financial situation, if it would be feasible. We had an overlap. We've talked about doing that. We've talked about maybe doing it uh, open on Saturday. There's uh -huh. one we option. Actually had it Saturday, but. Yeah. So we, we've had some recent conversations yeah. about that. We haven't come up with a solution yeah. yet. So when we do, we'll, no, we'll present that. Curious. Yeah, no. I agree. The is only with a in the middle. Well, they go from 9 in the morning until 6 p.m. They close at 6 p.m. So, right. and they're closed for one hour for lunch. Yeah, so yeah. see, that's 40 hours yeah. a week. Pretty narrow. Okay. Uh, Chet, I did have one quick question. I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, on page 24, is that the year to date for the end of June 30th, 2019, the 700,000 profit? Yeah. Is that? On, it's on page 24, the, the 13th month trend. Is that the year to date, or is that just that surplus at the bottom? Yeah. Year end. At the end of the uh, fiscal year. Yeah. 
the 700,000, Barbara, I'm gonna, because this is Barbara's number that's oh, looking at. Okay. <laughs> the 700,000 is post, post, uh, post closing. We have done, what we did is we took the internal adjustments for even putting in some of the uh, non-operating income and we actually created a new financial statement post-closing. That is the bottom line that we have. That's not the final, final bottom line because it's not the auditor's bottom line. Well, that was my next but question yes, was the, yeah. That's correct. Okay. Right. Okay. This is our post-closing bottom line. Yes. Okay. And of course, that'll fluctuate once the IGT comes in and all that Correct. after the audit. Okay. And any other right. elements right now. Well, actually, okay. some of this is IGT money. Oh, it or is. some of okay. it's prime money, which is like IGT. Okay. Okay. But it's what we what we have based upon what we think is going to hit the income statement. And there's expenses. We have expenses in there too. These are adjustments that we found after the close of the fiscal year. So okay. this is net. This, this is after post closing. Okay. And, and, Okay. Is there uh, traditionally a, 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 is there a, a correlation between uh, what comes out in the audit and what you finalize our year at? I mean, that, has it trended yes. trended differently? Post closing, we try to get the post closing as, as close as we can yeah. to what we think the auditors would put in there. Now they can surprise us one way or the other. Yeah. Okay. Historically, and it, the has is it yes. Historically, has it gone one way or the other more uh, often? Uh, Yes, if you want to talk about up to about three years ago, it yeah. went down. Okay. From three years ago, at least the last two years, it's gone up. Okay. That's what I want to do. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chad. Uh, there is no um, old business this evening, so we'll move on to new business. And item one is the annual ACHD meeting. It's on page 53. And this is the uh, Association of California Healthcare Districts, their annual conference. Um, we typically vote on this as a board every year, board members that want to go to this conference. It's very worthwhile. Um, you know, you get to network with some of the other hospital districts in California. They have workshops. They have um, folks from the legislature come in to talk about some of the laws affecting the healthcare industry in California. And it's going to be October 9th through the 11th down in uh, La Jolla, down near San Diego. La Jolla. La Jolla. La Jolla. La Jolla. La Jolla. Pines, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't pick the same. How much does it cost to play around there? I don't know, sir. Far more than they we can afford. Uncovered expenses. <laughs> <laughs> um, I played it on my Do you need a motion? Uh, yes, and then I think once we do the motion, then whoever wants to go, do we just let you know, Heidi? Okay. I know Barbara's gone, and I I've need to go and learn what I can how to handle Tim better. <laughs> uh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion that anyone who wants to, uh, any of the board who wants to go, is allowed to go. Okay. A second. Okay, it's been moved by Director Park, seconded by Director Cassis. Is there any other discussion? Yeah. Yes, sir. So what's in it for the district? What's in it for the public? How does this improve uh, health care delivery in Kern Valley? Um, well, some of the workshops that I've gone to, they talk very extensively about the Brown Act, um, how to you know communicate with the public, not just in a regular board session, but you know outside of a board session. So I mean, they, they do like a lot of very inf informative workshops. A lot of it is board education. Yeah. You know, okay. It's really the most formal board education you're probably going to find. Okay. You yeah. know, as it relates to district hospitals. And I would add, uh, Ross, that, that my biggest takeaway from attending these was always, undoubtedly, getting together with, that's how I found out about Beta or Insurer, you know, it's by talking to the head of that. But the best part about it was getting together with uh, board members from like districts, you know, up in Northern California and in rural areas who are going through the same ups and downs that we go through. And you find a lot of, they said, well, we did this and this seemed to work really well. And you, you come away with uh, a lot of information on things that people have tried and done. Uh, it, it, getting together with people from other areas, you find out that, it, again, as with humanity, we have much more in common than we have in different. And uh, um, so it's it's always great to just get that. The, the casual times, 
the seminars are good. You know, the meetings are good. As John mentioned, the Brown Act uh, refreshers are <coughs> always good uh, so that we stay on our toes and do things in the proper way. But uh, really, I, I love the informal conversation sitting at a table at a meal. You know, I always make sure and kind of get somebody out that I know what district they're from and that we have this common thread so that we can strike up a conversation and learn from one another. So. Yeah, last year they even had somebody from Oshpaw, I think. Or the head of Oshpaw was there to talk about the seismic okay. law and regulation. An interesting so, topic. Yeah. yeah. So thank any, you. You're welcome. Is there any other discussion? No. Okay. Hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Was right. there a second? Yes, there was. We can't barber cast the second. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any opposed? Okay, that passes. I think I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so who, who do I let know if I can go? I do. Heidi? Okay. Heidi. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it's a little over a month away, so you got, you got some right. time. Uh, item two is the uh, recommended goals for Tim. That's on page 54 of your packet. And uh, we, we're going to talk about this uh, after Tim's performance, but I know Tim had some health issues, and then we had some delays with the governance committee reviewing them so kind of give the board some more time to look at them but um, I, I haven't had an opportunity to discuss or look at or talk about at all period how, how, can, how can we look at that or give input before you put it on here well it was sent out in the board packet twice I believe it was sent out in the board packet mm -hmm. on what you're going to do well, I mean, we can. We, we could. Could there? Could you give us an opportunity to give input oh, on what yeah. I think the goal should be? Mm -hmm. Because they don't seem very. I know he hasn't been. I think we should have higher goals than what's in. So, but specifically, I don't want to take up the rest of the night talking about it. But I would like to be able to have input. Okay. Well, we'll let you go first, Director Parks. Okay. It's uh, uh, not not now because it's a lengthy thing. I would like to. Who would I give input to? Do I send you an email or who, who do you do? Who do you talk to? You guys well, have come up. I would with love to hear your input, and we can't we can't discuss it offline anyway because of Brown Act. So share share your I got info. my notes back at the office. There's a lot of them. Mm. <coughs> You guys can vote on it. I'll, I, it's not a. It's not. He's going to do the best he can, and we're going to move forward. So, but it, it's better. Um, so. I have a question. What is the um, normal time frame for this? And are we on target? That's that's the two questions I have. Actually, is uh, the normal what would be normal time frame for this performance and the uh, goals to be done um, without having any illnesses, without having any FEMA decide not to I mean give us money and then take it back or whatever they do occasionally. Um, well, these are the, I would, and then this is a new has, process. Has, by way. Yeah, this is a new, been yeah, resolved. this was this never a really requirement before. before. This is brand process. new this year. So we're mm -hmm. adding some goals to be a part of my overall performance uh, review, which and there are some mandated, right. there's some dates on here. But we have, we have been stopped so many times this year with our projects. And, and well, you, that's, you set goals to try and obviously keep things, things moving towards. And I'm saying, what is the normal? What have we done in other years that is that is um, the, as far as the evaluation is concerned? Can we compare to other years that are without uh, these things that the state and even federal has come up and. Um, Having ideas to, uh, for new revenue and not being able to put them in in action is to me very frustrating because of what's going on in the rest of the United States. 
um, and let alone having, uh, we've had employee problems, some, some employee problems. What is the, what is the census well, of a normal year all in the, of the goals? Those are all in the, right. the recommended goals. Have, have, does it look like, when you look at this list, that Tim has, has met 99% of them? That's... Well, skilled nursing break-even is... What is, what is break-even on skilled nursing? We're not so in 2020 yet. Yeah. Okay. So, this is a good number. So, right. so we want them to get up to break-even. That's what's supposed to be making us money. And it's wonderful skilled nursing. They're not going to make any money if it's break-even. How, well, how, and it the goal is, is break-even? Well, we are making money in the SNF. And we have for eight of the 12 months last mm -hmm. year. If you go back and look at the financial well, performance. Chet just said break even to 65. Well, I don't want to get into that conversation right now. Okay. But we've been well, obviously making work. money at a lot less. Okay. Well, if we, okay. you know, because we've been controlling our costs. I mean, one thing is going to lead to another. What we we yeah. know full well. The whole point well is we want to continue to build and move forward. That's we, what we got to do. We know full well that uh, probably our biggest problem is just uh, uh, professional to, to uh, resident ratios. And the CNA program is going to help in that regard. And there's a mandate here to get the <coughs> CNA program going, which is going to affect skilled nursing. We are profitable because we're profitable in other areas. With skilled nursing, of course, it's, well, let's stop the bleeding a little bit. As we go up in census, we slow that down, which makes us even more uh, profitable overall. But one thing's going to lead to another. And there are dates on here. And uh, you know, we, we don't say by, you know, March 13th of you know 2020, but um, we will visit these uh, as they come along and find out uh, the status. I mean, obviously with the SNP, I mean you're going to have some variations because people expire, of course. But uh, hopefully, with uh, the marketing that we're doing now, hopefully this number can keep building over the next year. The other thing I have to remember with the SNP is that the reimbursement is based upon your cost from two years earlier. Yeah. So that's how, you know, you may be getting well, he was here two years, rate. He was here two years ago. If goes down, you're going to get that lower rate two years from now. But he was here so two years ago, so. Yeah. If you try to think that what you're doing right now is going to keep you in the black. But we want a goal to be more than. That's, that's, why, break even. that's why you want to talk about it. Over time, that's why I said over time, yeah. 65 is over here. But he's, we're moving forward, and he's doing great. It's just, as far as goals go, I think it should be a little better. But however, you guys can go ahead and vote. And, well, I mean, if you have more input, I mean, by all means. Have a, I mean, <laughs> can we get it out till next? Uh, or do you want to go down now? Because I've got a lot of notes at the office, but I thought we were going to have a meeting or something different. Um, I, where were these were put together at which which committee? They were disseminated they were back in June. two months ago, I think, at least. By who? Yeah. By Heidi, and they were I, they were sent out and to primarily them. by Ross. Yeah, yeah. Ross, Ross and I worked oh. on them. I started it, and then Ross it, researched it, it, it got, and uh, it got disseminated to the board. Then it went to board <clears throat> governance for review. Mm -hmm. Now it's going back to the full board for formal adoption. So I had started on this when, you know, when I when I came on board, we were just going through the process of reviewing Tim's performance evaluation. And, you know, there's a tool that's used to do that. And, and in my mind, you know, we've got one employee that we're responsible for, and that's the CEO. Yet we didn't have any goals or anything stated on what we want him to accomplish for the year. Mm -hmm. um, and so this was an attempt to, to capture some of the big ticket items that weren't covered by that, that um, performance evaluation tool of here, this is the direction, this is what 
the board has decided okay, we want so, you to accomplish this. So I misunderstood. This so so you came in just as a person and presented this. I thought it was part of the evaluation. I didn't know it was going to be no. I had, I had part of. I had done a rough draft of these okay, at some point okay. a few so months ago. I, did, I misunderstood. Yeah. I, I I thought some committee had put it together. No. And so okay, so you have put it on. Yeah, and, and the thought being. We need to give specific, measurable direction of what we want to see accomplished in the next year. Okay, it's better than nothing, but but we and, and those aren't very high. And let's let's you know it, it, you know from where I sit, I want to get this right. So if, you know if we need to continue the discussion and and um, you know talk it more in depth at our next meeting, let's do yeah, it. Let's. Would you mind? I'm not at all. Okay. I mean, a lot of these Tim's already working on already. I mean, They're just yeah, right. part of the normal thing that we're going to do anyway to keep the district yeah. moving. Obviously, financial well, performance, you, obviously the, the grants, yeah. you know, obviously working on, you know, the, the, the mobile clinic, getting that license, the CNA training program. Those are all things that we need to get done, and obviously just to keep things moving forward. And that, this is really what we're doing is codifying it, you know, that this is the direction we want to work in. You know, and it's a it's a first pass, and you know, obviously, over time, we'll continue, we'll evolve the process, and we'll get more feedback and input into it. But okay, the idea I, was to at least I, get something then, in there. Then I'll make a motion to accept this as it is right now, and we can look at it as we progress along. Okay. Okay. We feel like. okay. There's a motion by Director Parks. I will second. And it's been seconded by Director Bush. Is there any uh, further discussion? Just for the record, Scott, we don't have to go through every single one of these, do we, uh, as a public record? Or? No, I mean, we don't. It's okay. entirely up to you. Okay. It's in the board packet. It's in the board packet. Okay, uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes. Thank you. Thank you. The last item on the agenda is the capital expenditure request, uh, True, True Bridge Recycle Revenue cycle management software, uh, Judy Latrell, if you would please come to the lectern. Can I um, can I interject here for just oh, a second? Yes, of course. This was reviewed by the finance committee, um, but we couldn't act on it because it didn't. There was wasn't a, well, the, didn't get there wasn't enough stuff for us to act on it. Okay. But but it's you know, and typically something like this would be um, you know on the consent agenda. But because of the urgency of it, we asked Judy to say, let's put it on the board agenda so the board can act. Okay. And so that's why that's why it's on the agenda yeah, tonight. Yeah, we rather. couldn't give notice. We weren't giving notice. Okay. Send it to our event. Oh, okay. So there was a timing problem. In the sense. We're just going to meet next week. Let's see if the board will. <laughs> All right. So thanks for giving me the opportunity. Um, I would have preferred to put what I'm going to show you on the but then you might break your necks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. So I did make some color copies, which I apologize to Chuck. If you'll share, that would be great. Share. Um, before I ask for um, money and approval on a CER, I wanted to just present to you a little bit of information about the revenue cycle and what we do in pi uh, patient financial services to really justify what we're asking for. So what you have in front of you is um, just revenue cycle KPIs goals. Um, KPIs are key performance indicators. The first one, uh, the first slide you're looking at is just the revenue cycle. And if you start at the top circle there on the revenue cycle tab, you see that that is registration. They pull all the demographic in. They get patients eligibility off of their insurance card. If we get it right there, we're off to a great start. The next step in the revenue cycle is charge capture. Any department that is providing services to a patient in any way, shape, and form needs to document and capture the charge for that service or supply. Next step in the revenue cycle is coding. That's done in the HIM Health Information Management Department. And there are specific codes that have to go along with a diagnosis. Insurance companies don't pay for pneumonia. They pay for 486. So those words, diagnostic and procedural words, are converted into codes that are paid for by the insurance companies. Next process in the revenue cycle is claims scrubbing. So once the account is coded, it drops into patient financial services world. There's queues. You pull, I pull up my queue every morning, 
and my claims are there, and each one I scrub. Some of that scrubbing is done internally with edits that'll pop up, saying you can't have this with that, you gotta add this with that. But the, the billers are scrubbing those claims to get them clean before they send them out. And then we, uh, hopefully, we've submitted those claims, and the next thing in the revenue cycle is we get paid. What a beautiful thing, what a perfect little world. It doesn't happen that way, but anyways, it's to live on that planet. Um, when a claim goes out and does not get paid, you have to work that claim. You have to follow up. You have to figure out why. Some claims are denied. Um, that's the next thing. Uh, we're following up to figure out why they didn't get um, paid, and then we go into our denials or we appeal some of those denials. That's the revenue cycle. That's what we're looking at software for. Um, we do have software. We're looking for a bigger, better, faster software. Um, the next slide is the DNF fee. It's called Discharge Not Final Bill. This is one of the department's goals. So what this says is patients have been discharged and they're not billed. So what we want to do is our goal is to be under $800,000 at any given time. And right now we're sitting uh, at July, we were at just about $900,000. A lot of work goes into that, a lot of people responsible for that. It's actually a pretty good number. I've seen a lot of DNFBs discharge not final bills very, very, very high and out of control. This isn't ridiculous at all. The next goal that the department has is aging over 120 days. If a claim is 30, 60, 90 days old, we don't necessarily spend a lot of our energy and time on it except that those that are going into denial or those that should have paid, Medicare pays very quickly, 14 days. If it's not paid in 14 days, we're gonna go find out why. Um, but some insurance companies take longer. The VA, for instance, they may take a year to pay. But anything that falls over 120 days old is money that we have to work on getting. It should never get out this far. This is a bad news. Um, right now, we're at 25% or excuse me, 26% of our total over AR is over 120 days. Our goal is to have that less than 15. So we're working on that every day. Next one is denials. These are inpatient denials, outpatient denials. Um, we don't have a very good process in our current system to track denials. It's very, very manual, very, very um, labor intense. So right now we have, uh, in July, we had 26 denials. And um, in the revenue cycle meeting, we talk about how much we've recovered, how much is at risk dollar-wise. The next one is the clean claim rate. These are how many claims go out the door and get paid without anybody touching them. Just boom, boom, boom. What we want to see is an overall rate of an 85% or better clean claim rate. Um, that is industry standard best practice. We are at 84 for the month of July. <clears throat> the other thing that comes into play with the revenue cycle is registration accuracy. There's people in front of the patients getting all this information, and if they make mistakes, it trickles all the way down to a bill not getting out, not getting out clean. So the goal here is to be at 90%, get us to 90%, and then we're gonna stretch that to 95, another industry standard best practice. So we are at 93% in June. We took July off trying to get automated in our registration QA. It has not panned out. We've gone back to manual. Uh, point of service collections. This is when we ask our patients for their co-pays, their deductibles, those kinds of things. So we want our goal to be 25,000, which is actually a very low goal. We're not asking for too much yet till we get the practice down the way we want it. But we are currently at asking uh, monthly July, we asked for 21, we received $21,000 in deductibles, co-pays, and um, co-insurance. Another goal we have is cash collections as a percent of net revenue. That's your pie graph. This pie graph represents um, each month, January to July, and the percent of cash collections for net revenue was 92.8. Of course, we want to be at 100% plus. Hey, Judy. Yes. I don't want to interrupt your flow, but no, can, we go go, right can we go back for a sec to the point of service collections? Uh huh. So the goal being a dollar amount, it seems odd to me, and it, you know, because I'm not in the billing world. So explain <laughs> to me why that makes sense, because it seems like to me we would want, you know, 
a hundred percent of what's collectible than, collect than, a, front, than yeah. Yeah. Number, rather yeah. than a dollar amount. Right. You can do it that way. Most industries go by a point of service collection based on a dollar amount. Really? Because we can tell that we have Medicare, you can't even count those. We don't get deductibles, we don't get copays. So based on your payer contract or the payer population that we see, we know twenty dollar copays, so we have a dollar estimate. This particular number, I, I'm not even sure you and I talked about this number. It's, a, it's based upon a history of what we have collected in the past yeah. for upfront collections and what we actually would like to see. Actually, it's been at around 20,000 for a number of years. And so raising that is good, but basically it used to be even lower. So there's only so much <clears throat> that is going to be collectible for, based on our... Sure our financial class, the, the patient population that we serve. So Medicare and Medi-Cal, we're not going to get any deductibles. We're not going to get any yeah. copays. So we come up with, on an average, based on our population, okay. what should we be seeing? Okay. Thank you. And like I said, that's really a low <coughs> threshold, but you don't want to put it at 50 and expect people to get so there. You want to take steps. My question would be that lends itself to a percentage, like you said. If the percentage is we've collected 20000 a month for 10 months, what should we have? That's, that's what I Yeah, and I don't have the ability in the current system uh, to do that. Maybe okay. with the new system. Yeah. May I ask you something? You need it, huh? You want it to go up. Right. And, and really, if you look at our averages more than four five months over the last really. five years, mm -hmm. you will not see it going up. Not go down, but you will not see it going up. Yeah. A lot of our emergency room business is hard to get back to patients or their families and ask for money in an emergency situation. Yeah. I mean, they're trained. There's a, it's a skill set um, of how to ask that, when to ask that. Um, so they're doing a great job. The clinic does a great job, too. By the time Ross and I are done with you, we'll be back at the beginning of this presentation. <laughs> but uh, I want to jump back to the registration accuracy, okay. just above the point of service. Is this program that we're talking about, is this something that will flag some sort of efficiency or? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, our system actually can do it now, uh -huh. and we just spent a lot of time building the background of it, mm -hmm. and it's just not sophisticated enough. But this one, this one can go back, we probably can. pinpoint where the problem is that yeah. this, uh, yeah. you know, okay. and we we're can, in the chain. Of, we can yeah. do that now, just not yeah. as in depth as we need to. The manual process is actually better for us. Yeah. So everybody has a scorecard in registration. Okay. They, we can tell exactly who's doing what and how long they've been doing it that way. Yeah. Thank you. And there's progressive discipline going actually, on. And if you thing. look at the last page of your financial packet each month, it has a lot of these goals on there. Oh, are they there? Mm -hmm. uh, and the last one is the bad debt write-off. This is after we, we have exhausted all efforts, um, primarily your private pays that um, patients have have not made contact with us. We make big efforts to get a hold of them to make payment arrangements, five bucks a month, and we'll be happy. Um, so this is the stuff that we're writing off. Um, there's also some other write-offs in there as well, but this is basically bad debt write-off. We want our bad debt write-off to be um, as little as possible. Um, so we're looking for a 3.44% bad debt write-off, and we're at 9% last month, which was a little high for a few specific reasons. Anyways, if you wanted to know more in detail, we don't have to take up the time here to do that. I can bring it to the Finance Committee if, if Ross and Gene are interested in that. Where would you like? I have a Revenue Cycle Committee meeting every month, and this is where this information is shared and discussed um, at that meeting. So with that said, um, I'd like um, to request the board's approval for the purchase of what is called TriBridge, TrueBridge Revenue Cycle Management. It is a web-based billing system. We currently um, use CPSI's uh, product. This is CPSI's product. Mm -hmm. It's just the bigger, the better, the newer system. They actually bought out a revenue cycle management system and are, are bringing it into facilities that have CPSI. Um, so this is completely compatible with our... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So on page 61 on, in your packet, if I can refer you there, I've done a project proposal summary. And this is basically telling you it's a software implementation. 
Um, it's about a six month go live from contract to go live and that's with everybody on their knees quite often. Um, the implementation costs are $14,675. That's a one-time implementation fee. The monthly fees are $3,335, and that is quite a big increase from our current pricing each month, which runs about seven or $800, depending on the volumes of claims we transmit. Um, we did, uh, Dina in risk management helped us with a ship grant and that is going to be bringing us four to five thousand dollars to put towards the implementation to kind of help out with that cost the increase in the monthly cost for the program it's really adding on products we don't have now that the return on investment will prove itself in no time the new products are the ra management we um, live in a stacks and stacks and stacks of paper in the patient financial services department and this will eliminate dramatically <coughs> because when you get an RA which are your explanation of benefits from your um, from your insurance companies those come to us all in paper just like they do to you and with this system they we can sign up with those insurance companies and get them all electronically and there's no more paper we also have to not only handle that paper we have to scan it into our system and this will eliminate that altogether. There's some other well bells and whistles with that as well. This comes with a $500 a month denials management program, which will automate our denials. We can trend. We can figure out, you know, is it a payer? Is it a person? Is it a physician? Is it a product? What product line is suffering from these denials, and how do we manage that better? Um, contract management is the most expensive product on the new list, um, and this is. Um, probably the most exciting part of the program for me. What you do is you build your contracts into the system. So every, if we have a contract with Bakersfield Family Medical Center, our current health system's um, great, great contract to work with. Um, and they're saying that they're doing this percentage of this for that, and that they're going to pay this, but they're only going to pay 80% of that, and this is not covered. You build all that into your system. So when you get paid by that company, you post that payment, it's going to say, wait a minute, didn't pay the contract. So there is the potential for so much lost revenue, um, so much loss of income, because we're not managing our contracts against what we're getting paid. Okay. Potential um, for increased income. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and then the scrubbing and submission software is a little priced a little bit differently in this particular product. So our goals, objectives for the um, for what I'm proposing is to increase the productivity for faster um, billing, which allows for more timely follow-up, which reduces that old age, those old aged accounts. Um, automating, customizing things in a way that just allows that workflow to reduce all this manual process. I wish you guys knew our business and you can hang out with us and understand the way that things work are, are so uh, out of control with how you have to do things in a manual world. Um, number two objective would be to improve the management of the denials and the contract, contract management by reducing loss, any loss of revenue there. Uh, number three would be reduce our 120 day accounts by 11%. Goals have to be uh, uh, measurable. So our reducing our 120 days to 11%, Chet was wanting it to be a little bit more, but I was afraid to go that far and set myself up and my team up for failure, so I, I think I got close enough that he was okay with it. Um, but that is a best practice um, within 12 months of the completion date. And then um, the fourth objective is another measurable goal of reducing our AR to 54%, another one that Chet wanted me to go a little lower, and I was a little nervous there. So I went with 54%, which is a very, very respectable um, AR within 18 months of the completion date. So um, I listed there on that page 61 that you're looking at the different products for the cost breakdown. There's also a page on page 62, which gives you the cost comparison to what we have now and what we will, and, and the difference between um, what we'd have if we were to get this um, product. The only thing, there's only two uh, caveats to the entire project, and that is we have not been to been able to speak with a skilled nursing facility that uses this system so that we can just take our edge off of 
how does it work for you guys? What does it look like? Because it's very particular when you're when you're billing for skilled nursing facilities. I did get a name and a number of a facility um, today, so we will be making contact to them. It is not a showstopper. No. If if this facility says you can't do it that way, we don't do it that way. It won't work that way. We can still do it the way we're doing it now. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, and then the other caveat <coughs> is the uh, medical eligibility. When those come across, they have to be the, uh, they have to look a certain way for our auditors for them to be acceptable. And we're looking for a California facility that um, can provide us one so that we can make sure. If again the system can't give us one that the auditors are okay with, we can always um, do our medical eligibility the way we do it now. Can we build that into the contract? To, can we build it into the contract if they continue to develop that until we get one that's oh, acceptable? That, that, that's a great idea, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'm just hoping it all, you know, they just, they can do they it. They actually were supposed to have done that in the prior, we're never able to do it. Yeah. So the biggest question, I, you know, I, I don't think there's any doubt that, you know, it, it, it's wonderful to do something that's more efficient that makes it more efficient, that is going to, we're, we, we look at it in a realistic point of view, we go, wow, that's a lot of money to spend, but guess what, I don't know everything. Uh, that comes as a shock to many people, I know. <laughs> but so I, you know, depend on people like Judy and Barbara and, and Chet in this regard. Uh, in your opinion, you feel this is a worthwhile? Um, My situation is, I don't, I don't like to buy things just to make it easier, you know. No, the but to make it more efficient. That really, I went for, and although I think sometimes uh, they, they're pricing a little high, but it's not very, not not a, a that high compared to what they wanted us to spend on their anchoring product. We're not getting it all. We're just getting pieces of it. It's the contracts management. There's absolutely never been, and is not any contract management with our contract payers right now. The only reason that we do as well as we do in our ARDs and our collections is because a lot of it's Medi-Cal and Medicare and Medi-Cal managed yes. care. Okay? That's the only reason. Because we don't do any contract management. It's what the person, you know, the person is actually yeah. adjudicating when that comes in in the RA they try to catch things just by knowing, mm -hmm. but outside of that, that is the entire amount of contract management. So this actually <clears throat> builds in what I was used to for most systems 25 years ago, okay? Most systems had a contract management capability over 20 years ago, why? Because system, most of the systems out there were using third-party figures. The Blue Crosses, the Aetnas, okay? Those, you want to have contracts management in there because they won't necessarily pay you what you contracted for at that time. Mm -hmm. So if you don't catch it when you're adjudicating, the, when you're looking at the payment and posting it, you're not going to catch it. I would assume that, that uh, you know, like you said, it's, it's a little unknown on how this might integrate with the skilled nursing facility, but I'm assuming all other departments, including our health clinic, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's all built. It's all built. Well, it's, not as, it's not as applicable to the skilled nursing unless they can change what they now can't do with Medi-Cal because CPSI could not bill Medi-Cal correctly. Yeah. And that's because they really proliferate in other states mm -hmm. and not California. They're growing more here. But basically, they've never been able to bill Medi-Cal in a way that Medi-Cal needs to be billed or wants to be billed. So we have to send it out to a separate clearinghouse. That's what we do now. And they're trying to sell us again that they can fix it. We don't have to send it off. In the new to a system, we we live right and there. And that's why she's trying to have somebody show her in California in a skilled mm -hmm. nursing facility that it will do what Medi-Cal wants it to do. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fair request of, of the uh, the maker, you know, to find out if this is going to uh, get that information, or, you know. But I, yeah, I, I mean, you say maybe not in favor of making things that much easier. I, I look it, at, it, at, at more efficiency. If this is done uh, right. Yeah. Because she talked about the number of 
in the days that you wanted it, it was at 23 and you wanted it to be down under 15. Mm -hmm. Okay, most of that is commercial insurance. Oh. Our days are great for Medicare, our days are great for Medi Cal yeah. and Medi Cal managed care. They're not so great for commercial insurance. Commercial insurance should be down there under 15 percent but if we could i mean but the whole you the sum of the, the, the sum of the parts obviously contract is management in there that you will get down there under 15 percent yeah. for commercial insurance mm -hmm. and you may recoup enough to yeah. pay for the ongoing pr price of the contract yeah. okay. which is the biggest share of what you're paying ma'am you had a question for yeah, judy yeah if you don't mind i'm um as i'm listening to everyone speak in the big picture, the overall picture, do you have an estimated, say, percentage? I understand you don't know, but is there an estimated percentage of the increase in revenue because of this accuracy of this program? I have not calculated in increased percentages into dollars now. Well, it's kind of hard to know, like, be, yeah. unless, you're Maybe, yeah. unless you're managing each individual contract. It's going to be contract. a pretty precise swag factor because you're really talking about the kind of contract management. Right. And I may right. not have said it correctly. There's a reason for this, not just making it easy. Is the investment going to pay off? Yes. Yeah, and and put us in a better, put us yeah. in a positive, right. more yeah. positive. So, and we can't yeah. predict the future. Right. So when that. when you look at um, <clears throat> On the, on the project, you're, I'm sorry, you're not able to see it, but on the project proposal where the, the project objectives, so <clears throat> besides improving efficiency and workflow, that's manpower. So there's always a cost saving when you can increase right. manpower um, and reduce, you know, redundancies, uh, unnecessary redundancy. In the reducing our 120-day accounts to 11%, by 11% to 11% within 12 months. I, I didn't take that 11% against how much is dollars is in there, so I couldn't tell you a dollar figure. Right. But if if my team and I are successful with that, it's going to triple the cost of this thing easy. Um, and then the reducing the AR to 54%, what the AR is, is we've how much is sitting out there waiting to be paid and how much we got paid. So if we can, if right now we're at 58. Eight. So if we can get money in quicker, faster, that that pays for itself as well. But I, I did not convert <coughs> percentages into two dollars. Thank you. Okay. Mr. McGear had a question. Yeah. Uh, so you said, but uh, in answer to her, you mentioned that with this software, you are able to not have as much manpower, you don't need as much manpower, so you're able to have so much better accuracy in the program. Uh -huh. Does that mean you're able to downsize employees that you have within your um, you know, there may be in the future, but at this point, we don't have enough manpower to do the follow-up and the things that we need to be doing well right now. So this will free up staff to be able to be more effective at what they should be doing in the revenue cycle. Um, I, I have talked about the possibility of that. It wouldn't be something more than maybe a, 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 one, a 0.5 FTE in the long run if it happens. I've got a crystal ball on that. <laughs> Whenever I've seen automation solutions that you know tout greater efficiencies and whatnot, um, rarely does it end up leading to fewer people needing to manage it. To manage it. Um, those people may be more productive. It may be bringing in revenue sooner, which is you know what I'm hoping to see. Um, but in automation solutions, you show me a project where it really results in, in fewer people needed, and it's rare. Not only that, really they rare. understand they have a productivity factor. Yeah. The productivity factor is re registrations. That's not going to change. So they're going to. It's you know they're still going to have the same number of registrations, whether they have this system. Right or whether they don't, and it's going to come out to the same number of work FTEs in their productivity schedule. Yeah. I do not anticipate <coughs> any reduction in hours worked. Judy's right. The two big things in accounts receivable here that are problems, deficiencies, are the contracts management I talked about, and follow-up. 
And she talked about not doing anything for up to 90 days. Well, the whole idea is if it doesn't hit exactly when it's supposed to, and most of the time they will, you do follow up. The orientation has been, here comes the bills. The three days after discharge, they're dropping. Get them out. Don't go home until you get them out. And that's good, because that's true. But you've got to follow them up. And the longer you wait, how much money did I write off today for past timely follow-up? Um, Tell me. $60,000. Yeah. Can I make a motion? <laughs> Can I make a motion to accept the proposal as we can start a discussion, right? But you can do a motion a second and then have the remaining discussion. I'd like the motion, the motion to accept her proposal as presented. Okay, there's, oh, there's a motion by Director Parks, there a second? A second. Second by Director Cassis. Is there any other discussion or any other questions for Judy? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for the uh, presentation, Judy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Okay. That has passed. Uh, item H is director's comments on items not appearing on the agenda. Uh, we'll start with Director Elliott. Do you have anything? You know, I I don't have anything huge. I wanted to um, think. I wrote your name down. This is Weatherstone. Weatherstone. Featherstone. 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 Thanks for thanks for coming. Thanks for coming and telling us of your concerns. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. that. And they will be addressed. I'm yeah. Sure you it, well, I'm sure it will be. Um, I, well, I think it's an important issue. And if, you know, if it's something that's bugging you and you never say anything about it, how are we going to fix it? So thank you. Okay. I will. Um, Director Bush, do you have anything? Uh, yeah. I would like to ask Judy if, since we've approved getting this program, is it possible for you to? Pirate a copy for me? Uh, no, <laughs> uh, I'm, just, I'm just joking. Uh, no, I really the only thing that no, pirate. The only thing. Thank you. I, I'm glad you mentioned uh, about the about the the water because I feel the same way. It, it it maddens me that I see some commercial properties around here watering at 4:30 in the afternoon. You know, when I'm going, half of it's evaporating before it even, you know, does its job. Uh, but because no matter how much water we have, we still need to conserve. Well, at least uh, they're doing it at night. Yeah, they're yeah, they're doing it at the proper time they are. But, but uh, thanks for for bringing that up. I, you know, I've always said, and it still holds true, that we can't fix it if we don't know what's going on. So no matter how the concern how trivial it may seem, how major and, and you know, uh, it may seem. We want to hear about it. Uh, but the, the, the only thing I wanted to get out of my mouth tonight was to uh, say thank you to uh, Cindy and the entire uh, auxiliary, uh, the foundation, everything. And I want to thank Orion Sanders for all the help with, with uh, he, he took a lot off my plate uh, this year. He and, and uh, Deborah Hess took a lot off my plate uh, because I've been very busy. Uh, with River Rhythms uh, this year, so I just wanted to publicly say thank you for your participation. Looking forward to next year. I, I hope there's only four Fridays next month. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob Easter Day. I want to say thanks to him because he's, he's the best roadie money can buy. He's <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. I want to give a shout out real fast on that note to fact that we were able to have several of those weekends, the Steel Nursing Center resident. Uh, yes. That was, yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. That was cool. That was fabulous. Got to show off the bus. And, and dancing. And dancing. And dancing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And yes, they were up here. So, yes. Thank you, Susie Cedar, for that. Whoever took yes. it, were you the one doing it? Oh, your recreation part. Okay. Is there anything uh, else, Director Bush? Oh, no, no, thank you. Oh. You will. Okay, Director Parks. <clears throat> I just want to thank Heidi for correcting the minutes to the July minutes that was in the packet. Uh, that it was left out that Bob's total income was brought up to 362 a year for the total compensation, and yeah. it was corrected. So. Thank you, Heidi. We'll make sure to put that uh, in the minutes that you meant Tim, not Bob. Oh, Tim. <laughs> Bob, he reminds me Bob so much of Bob Bibby, who I respect oh. a lot, and I keep confusing Tim. Well, they're both from uh, the Boston area, too, so. Yeah. <laughs> Rick Cassidy, yeah, you uh, I just think it's exciting that, uh, that uh, 
to see that these things that can improve not only uh, the health healthcare situation uh, that we are moving forward, no matter how many mm -hmm. stumbling blocks are put in front of us, and that we have employees that that um, are um, stalwart enough to stand behind a, an idea that will bring more revenue in. Uh, I like to see that after all the years I've been serving. Um, it really, um, it turns me on. <laughs> and uh, I thank you for being here. Well, and I'll just reiterate what everybody else said and say to you all the time. <laughs> thank you all for coming. Uh, we are adjourned at 7.30. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Thank you.